Good afternoon. My name is Tavia Danch, and I am the Community Outreach Manager at Colorado State University Global. I am pleased to welcome you to today's webinar. Before we get started, I wanted to remind you of a few things. I know we're all experts at Zoom these days, but for those that are using the platform for the first time, um, please note that at the bottom of the screen, you will see a Q&A button. So at any time during the presentation, please go ahead and submit any questions you might have there, and we'll answer as many of those questions during the Q&A section at the end of the presentation. You'll also see a chat button. Uh, please feel free to introduce yourself, tell us what you hope to learn today, where you're joining from today. Just remember to select all participants, or I'm sorry, panelists and attendees in the dropdown. And finally, after the webinar, we'll send each of you a copy of the recording and a short survey for you to fill out so we can continue to improve our webinars and information um, to make sure it is valuable to you. So next slide, please. During this webinar, really excited that Manish Patel is here and will be sharing information about CSU Global cybersecurity degree and certificate and how our programs can help prepare you for the future of work within the industry. Manish Patel is the program manager for IT and cybersecurity at CSU Global. Manish has over 20 years of teaching and industry experience in the IT and security fields and holds various Microsoft certifications. Manish is also a certified ethical ha hacker and has participated and won many hacking competitions. Next slide, please. And before we get started, just a little bit more information about CSU Global. Uh, so CSU Global was created by the Colorado State University System back in 2007 as the first independent 100% online state university in the US. We have over a decade of leadership in providing quality online education that is designed specifically for the modern learner. So we will be sending you more information and instructions and an application waiver if you're interested in moving forward uh, with CSU Global. But next slide. First, and to get everybody thinking about today's discussion, I just wanted to share a quick quote from Stefan Napo, who said that the five most efficient cyber defenders are anticipation, education, detection, reaction, and resilience. Do remember, cybersecurity is much more than an IT topic. And with that, I'll turn the time over to Manish Patel. Please enjoy the program. Thank you, Tavia. Uh, so before we jump into anything, right, it's we have to understand what cybersecurity is, right? Because we hear a lot of terms. We hear system security, information security. Basically, they all encompass the same thing. It is basically protecting networks, devices, and data from unauthorized access, uh, whether it be for profit or non for for nonprofit. There are groups that just access data for you know just sending out information to make it a publicly available information, and we want to protect those information from what we call the CIA triad, basically the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the information. And why is this important, right? Why, what does it happen? Like do I, you can relate this to costs, basically. So the average cost for any in US alone, data breach is around $8.19 million. And that actually drops if they have a good cybersecurity policy practices and personnel as part of this, uh, you know, overall security posture built into the uh, to the, the company policies that drops to two point six million dollars. Now, this I want to emphasize one point in this slide here is this unauthorized access. That unauthorized access does not mean hackers. When usually, normally we say, "Well, it's this hackers." Well, it is. It's also insider threats that are also part of this overall security posture. And it, it's very important to understand that attacks can come from within and outside of the network. The other stuff, uh, why cybersecurity has just exponentially grown recently is the use of cloud computing. So if you rewind the clock back seven years, 
to 10 years, we had a clear cut boundary. Everything inside of a network, there was a firewall or firewalls was basically protected and nobody from the outside was allowed to, to enter the network unless they had authorized access. So we literally cut off majority of the um, you know, hackers from the outside. Well, with the extent of cloud computing, remote mobile workforce, right? In this COVID era uh, pandemic we live in right now, everybody's remote. So that security boundary that used to be a physical security boundary now is no longer in existence. So the industry has moved away from, you know, evolved actually from having this one boundary to, you know, hey, we have to implement what's known as a zero security. Basically, we don't, we have to verify the identity of the user and we have to, we have to make sure that the device they use, right? Any device, it could be a Windows device, could be a, a Mac device, it could be a phone, anything that they access, that device is also healthy, meaning it's not, you know, it doesn't have, it's not infected with malware. So all of this has brought in, um, you know, this cost that associates with data breaches if, you know, if organizations don't pay attention to those. So why, like, what is the outlook? You know, I have students tell me all the time, hey, I mean, it's hot, but will this industry stay hot? And I'll give you an, your, an example of uh, this will not go away, right? So back in 2018, uh, the ransomware alone attacks that happened was $8 billion across the planet, global ransomware. That's how much people, individuals or organizations, for-profit, non-profit, you name the industry, they all paid. In 2019, we saw that jump by another three and a half billion dollars to a total of 11 and a half billion dollars. And in 2020 alone, that has now increased by another eight and a half billion dollars to a total of 20 billion dollars ransomware. So we're not just talking about, you know, a few millions dollars here and there. We're talking globally organizations and individuals are paying $20 billion and mainly most of it is all organizational, right? They're paying, and, and if you read the statistic, it's, you know, recently University of Chicago Medical, Medical School, right? Um, then you had um, Barnes and Noble recently had data leakage. Uh, so if you have a Barnes and Noble account, if you ever did business with them, make sure you go and change your user ID and password. It's simple as that. This is, you will see this attacks on a regular basis so this industry is not going away. Cybersecurity is here to stay. Organizations need this. The statistics you see here, right? 62% experts, you know, are needed to meet the growing demands of cybersecurity. 32% uh, of the employers so that were surveyed said, hey, we're gonna need uh, information uh, analysts, security analysts. Um, so this, this is not going to go away. There's a huge shortage currently According to the U.S. Census Bureau, there's there are over 1.5 million jobs alone in the United States that companies can't fill because there are no personnel out there not trained enough to do this. A lot of companies are saying, you know, hey, we if we can find a lot of CIOs and CISOs says if we can find personnel, we can train them further, but we need for them to have this base knowledge of what cybersecurity is. So the the outlook is here to say, I tell my students all the time that you can't go wrong with cybersecurity. Um, next five, 10, 15 years, uh, it's gonna happen. My son is getting ready to graduate. I've tried to push him into cybersecurity. Unfortunately, I've been unsuccessful, but you know, uh, this is why, I, I mean, I believe it. So I not only talk about it, but I tell it to everybody who wants to listen to it, including my family. All right, so what do cybersecurity people do? All right, and normally that's the next question I get is what do they do? So they do wide a range of things. You can sit, you you can just sit and write policies, cybersecurity policies, All right? Well, every organization you now deal with is governed by whether state, federal uh, rules or regulations, right? CSU Global, you know, it's just by FERPA, right? The Federal Educational Right Protection Act. So as CSU Global, as a institution, we have to take uh, measures to protect student information, federal law, health information, right? 
HIPAA. Uh, you go into the anybody that takes card payments, right? And which is almost any e-commerce retailer. Now there's the the um, you know the the compliant policies, the PCIs, right, to protect the information. So the rules and regulations are taking place. So that's number one, right? You could policies of related stuff as a cybersecurity personnel. The other one is, you know, you can play what I call an on an, an on offense, right? You're constantly uh, monitoring your systems, your networks and devices, automated systems that come, there are coming alerts, and you're going sitting there and closing alerts, examining the evidence, and says, hey, you know, somebody's literally coming into our network. Uh, it's happening in real time. Let me go take steps to um, you know, fix that uh, vulnerability that they're exploiting. Um, then there's you can play what's known as a defense. So you can there are companies out there that will say, hey, uh, you can hire us to come in and do what's known as penetration testing. So these are you, they think like hackers, um, and then they come in and they try to penetrate a network or a system, and says you know here are the vulnerabilities on your system. Here's how I'm, I'm able to go with all the policies, all the logical and the physical um, you know, barricades that you have put in place, for example, firewalls, intrusion, intrusion detection systems that I'm able to bypass uh, for one reason or another, and I'm able to get to it. So you can have a, if you are, if that sounds exciting, that's one of the paths you can choose within cybersecurity. Or, um, one of the other things you can do is you can go into forensics uh, side of the cybersecurity. An incident has occurred. Now there's got to be forensics, right? You have to, you know, let's go back. If CSU Global knock on whatever happens, they get a ransomware attack. There's they have to do now forensics analysis. What happened? How did somebody get there after the ransomware is recovered? All of that stuff has to occur. So. There are a wide variety. You're not just sitting there, similar to computer science, writing a piece of code at your desk and sitting there for eight hours. There's a wide variety of roles that you can play within cybersecurity um, that you're not tied to one or the other. All right, so what skills, right? Every, you know, I just mentioned sort of these four pillars of cybersecurity that you can fit in, but what is it, what type of skills does somebody needs besides those technical skills, right? So we need somebody to who's going to strategize, right? Take all that information, you know, then in order to protect those systems, for example, or take all of that information when an incident has occurred, and sort of do do this reverse engineering, like how did the hacker or potential hackers they got into the to the system? Once they got in, what did they do, right? So we need somebody to strategize. And then we also need somebody to communicate, right? No matter out of those four pillars that I mentioned, every pillar, we need to have somebody that's gonna communicate. If you're playing that offense, right? Or if you're playing that defense, if you're playing that defense, you gotta say, okay, here's how I did it. And so presentation that could occur to a client or, or an organization saying, you know, here, here are the gaps in your hole, here are this, this thing. And here's how you can empower your employees. You can train your employees to do this. Um, and then we also need somebody to have just basically optimization, right? So technology is ever-changing field. We need somebody to be able to go get and learn new skills, uh, lifelong learning, training, all of that industry certifications, right? As technology changes, companies like CompTIA, they change their security for example, Security Plus certification go from version five to version six. Um, they certify ethical hacking, go from one version to another version. So all of those skills are still this, what I call soft skills are still needed inside, um, you know, in the, inside a program which we deliver besides the technical skills. All right, so what do we, you know, why cybersecurity? Uh, at CSU Global. So I, I get one of the things, first thing when we propose this program to the Board of Governors that Tavia mentioned earlier, right, was like, what, how can we differentiate our program from other cybersecurity programs? And um, so we were sitting there and, you know, as I'm designing the program and the classes, I said, we need somebody 
because of those gaps in the program, right? The research have been done that because there are gaps in the employment, we want somebody to come in who doesn't have any experience, you know? So how, why, why design a, you know, so let's design a program where somebody who has no skills can come in and learn the skills, learn not only the technical skills, but the, the three soft skills that um, I've just mentioned earlier. So that's the, the draw of our program is basically we teach you everything. We also said um, in the industry, we're also is asking if you go and if you look at recent news that Google and Microsoft and Facebook and a lot of these technology companies, they realize that there are not females into the programs. So our program said, you know what, we want to attract more females because different level, different way of thinking, different level of thinking, right? And to protect the systems. So it's sort of like we took all of these gaps that we saw in, in the industry, we talked to the industry leaders, right? We talked to the CISOs and the CIOs. We talked to the, C, the technical personnel um, and says, you know, what, if you were designing, what would be the thing? So we design our cybersecurity program that way. It starts every month, so you can get started anytime you know you want to get started. Um, it's com completely customizable. We have uh, electives. We have different um, inside cybersecurity. You can say, you know, hey, I want to get a certificate into technology operations or webs. I want to get an into a web certi certificate, web development. You can certainly do that. And then also our program is aligned because it's a uh, with the the National Security Agency has this designation, has a, a sort of this Center for Academic Excellence uh, designation. So our program is de designed or aligned to the to meet those uh, rigorous standards that the NSA. So we've, as an organization, we've applied for that designation. As uh, so, you know, eventually the process will move along, and we're you know we're really really hopeful that the program is then. Uh, certified by the NSA has, uh, you know, the Center for Applied Excellence uh, achieve the standards. All right, so the other question that I get from students is, hey, you know, I, I see all this, I'm doing research in cybersecurity and a lot of organizations are asking for these certifications. So again, going back when we we're designing this and says, yep, yeah, absolutely, you're right. So our courses, are designed to match um, the certifications that the industry is looking for. So for example, our security plus, um, if you take a course in introduction to security, it's actually designed for you to, so we use the content that matches the security plus certification. Um, or if you wanna go into um, ethical hacking, we have a course that has a mapping to ethical hacking uh, thing. We have a, class on mobile forensics, if you want to go into forensic. So our course is actually mapped to actual certifications and the tools we use also point to those content. We do the other uh, thing about our program is majority of the thing is hands-on learning. So we do ask students to say, hey, I want you to go ahead and install this operating system. And then inside the operating system, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. So it's not just uh, theory-based, we also provide hands-on. One of the feedbacks we got from the industry was, hey, you know, it's good to have uh, theoretical, but we also want students to have some of the hands-on. So when we do train them for the higher level boards within that, they actually have some of the basics that they need. And um, the one major question I get always is, you know, hey, I look at it and CISSP is the certification to have, and that is absolutely correct. That is absolutely so, but not a one eight week course, which our courses are designed to can cover the CISSP objectives. So we sort of said, you know what, let's build into almost every single course, all of those um, pillars or objectives of those CISSP. So we built it into every course. So by the time you graduate, you're ready to go and take the actual CISSP exam if you wish to do that. So we've got, you know, alignment from the industry, we got alignment from the soft skills. Uh, so we've taken everything uh, we have into and put it into this program. And some of the students who are already enrolled are providing, you know, positive feedback about our classes. 
We have one more other thing I want to mention about our program is a lot of our uh, faculty are leaders inside, um, you know, working out in the organizations. They're adjunct faculty, um, they have advanced degree, and they are, you know, they lead it. They are either the CIOs or CISOs or directors, or they actually are now incident handlers. Uh, we have one that works for, uh, you know, the DOD space that actually, you know, protects the national infrastructure. That's all he tells me. So I'm not, I don't have any other one. I'm sure he does a lot more other stuff. So we have all these faculty. We hire faculty that have industry knowledge as well. All right, so what are some key takeaways take from our programs? All right, again, 62% experts say they're, they're, they're finding hard to meet um, demands, okay? Our programs are aligned professionally with industry certifications. Uh, if you don't wanna pursue a degree in uh, cybersecurity, you can start out with a graduate or undergraduate certificate in cybersecurity. And then, you know, students get, this is the return on our investment, right? And Forbes just recently ranked us as the best ROI, one of the top 20 ROI universities in, uh, in terms of returning on our investment and the amount of dollar that you would spend taking on courses at CSU Global. Um, so highly urge you to fill out those surveys, uh, you know, follow through with the success counselors, enrollment counselors, and um, I will tell, turn it over to uh, to uh, Tavia and the and Lauren for any questions you might have. Wonderful, thank you so much, Manish. That was really wonderful. We will now transition to our Q and A session. And as a reminder, to submit a question, please click on the Q and A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen and type in any questions you might have, and we'll get them answered um, in this next session of the presentation. So first question, Manish, when will CSU Global find out if the program will receive NSA accreditation? So we've applied, it's a, it's a great question, whoever asked that, we've applied for the NSA designation. Um, it, it takes anywhere from 12 months to 18 months, right, of the designation. And because the program was just launched in fall, we've applied. So it's going to, you know, if you do the math, it's probably sometime next year, at the end of next uh, calendar year, that we should have the designation, um, if, uh, the NSA designation in place. Wonderful. Next question. Are there any work experience education prerequisites necessary for this program? No, there are none. Um, as I mentioned, um, our program is designed slowly from ground up. We teach you the basics of, you know, we, we start you off with literally basics, you know, the what is a computer, what is a, you know, inside of the computer starting from there. And then we build your skills up slowly. At time, we go into a little bit of networking then before you start taking. We also give you access, you know, um, basically exposure to different operating systems, because not not one organization, you know, has only one operating system, multitude of operating systems. So we give you exposure to that, and then we slowly start you off building those skills into cybersecurity. Wonderful, thank you. What's the difference between the certificate and degree, I guess at the undergraduate level, and how do I know what is best for me? Um, another great question. So the, in the certificate program is basically you take, uh, I believe five or six courses and you get a certificate in cybersecurity. Um, the, the, um, the, the undergraduate program in cybersecurity, you actually get a, bachelor's degree and so that's a more like a traditional you know four-year program where you take uh you know at courses outside of cybersecurity um into your uh, general electives and uh, courses such as those um for, as far as what is best um organizations typically look for somebody who has um you know if they're if they don't have any experience in the it field then they say, okay, at least now they got a cybersecurity degree. So they sort of started looking from there and then they look for somebody who actually has those industry certifications. The cybersecurity uh, certificate is main, it's, it's mainly designed, I mean, it's, you could take, anybody can take it, but 
I think I would like to tell students that it's designed for students that have experience in the IT field, but now want to break into the cybersecurity. So they maybe they're a developer, they're a database administrator, and they want to go and shift their focus inside IT. So they really have some of these backgrounds and they're ready to take cybersecurity. So that's the, one of the differentiation between the, the degree and the uh, certificate program. Wonderful. Thank you for talking through that. Next question, by the end of the degree program, can you say you're certified in those aligned certifications or do you have to take additional courses and tests to be certified? Okay, another great question. So certification, the industry certification that I talked about, the CISSB, the CompTIA Security Plus, the Ethical Hacking from UC Council, those we teach you the knowledge, but you still have to go and take the exam with that organization in order to achieve that certification. You can't say you're certified because you haven't passed their certification. So you can't use that designation in your, for example, in your signature. Uh, like for example, my security plus, my uh, certified ethical hacking, my CYSA, I had to go and sit those, you know, go and sit for those exam and pass those exams to do, to do that. So we teach you those skills and the knowledge that you need to pass those exams yeah, if that's not clear, please let me know. Thank you. Does CSU Global offer specific ethical hacking courses or is it integrated into the cyber security program in general? Nope, we, gave, we have a, um, um, from EC Council, we do have an ETH course, ethical hacking course. So we do have that course uh, that you can go and uh, enroll in the course as part of the graduate, uh, I mean, as part of the certificate program or as part of a degree program. And we do have that course that actually just maps to the CEH, similar to the Security Plus and the CY, um, the, the CYSA and courses such as those. Um, so we do have a certified ethical hacking course. So we do teach you those skills of, hey, you know, this is how organizations sort of protect, right? So certified, it, usually people have a, you know, hey, am I going to be sitting there and hacking systems? You're going to be, you're going to learn how to hack systems. Absolutely. Uh, that we teach you those skills. Wonderful. Next question. Are CompTIA certifications available through CSU Global? Um, not sure what that question is actually asking, but if they're asking if we provide a voucher for those certifications when you take the course uh, or when you take the exam, then um, that's a marketing question. We used to have a program um, that we used to do that. I don't know if that still exists. Um, that could be one of the takeaways, I guess, Tavia, that somebody you can follow up with. Um, but yeah, I don't know about that. Yes, and we can certainly follow up with that question um, with an enrollment counselor just to make sure that we have, yes, um, more information to, to get you. So um, if you don't mind just putting your information into the chat, we can you know certainly follow up with you after this webinar. Um, next question, I am currently enrolled in the BS cybersecurity degree program. And I also hold multiple um, InfoSec certifications, including the um, CISSP. Why does the CISSP only satisfy one course in the curriculum? Um, that's a great question. Um, uh, I mean, you know, we, we still have to abide by the rules of uh, our accreditation committee. Uh, so that's one of the reasons, unfortunately, we, you know, we, we can't do that where it says, okay, well, that maps to three courses or two courses. So these are rules governed by our accreditation and by our governing councils um, to do that. We just, you know, can't uh, give out, I would love to give out more credits, at least six credits, but unfortunately that's the only thing we, you know, we can do. Thank you. Okay, next question. How long does it take to complete the certificate and about how long does it take to also complete the degree? Um, the certificate program is uh, five to six classes. So you can take those, you know, one, 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 one. So it will, in our courses run, 
you know, eight weeks. Uh, so it will take you about, you know, eight months to to year, to year. In our degree program, I couldn't tell you, but if you are starting from scratch, then what it takes around three years. Uh, that's really a great question for a success counselor because if we do give you some credits, transfer credits and things like that. So I can't specifically comment on it. But you know, if you're if you're new and you have no, if you're right out of high school, then I would say roughly about three years to finish your degree. Great. And the last question, or actually, no, we have some no more. No worries. <laughs> These are great questions. That's great. I know. Wonderful. Keep them coming. Um, how much of this degree program is lab-based work versus writing papers? Um, so another great question. So our courses are designed where the, so we, every week we have weekly discussion that basically it's a written writer, you're interacting with your class, classmates and your professor. Um, and then the CT assignments, um, some, depending on the course you take are, some of it is hand on, hands-on, right? Where you go and do the stimulated lab, simulated labs, or you actually do some install portion. As we are revising courses, we're moving more and more towards away from sort of writing and then going into more of the hands-on activity using tools. Uh, we recently revised multiple courses where we're doing uh, some of that. Um, so they're shifting more and more towards the hands-on activities where you're given a vir either a virtual environment uh, or you're asked to create a virtual environment. Um, and then you're doing the labs inside of that. And those are your assignments. Wonderful. Next question. With the avenues in cybersecurity at CSU Global, does the program offer you to specialize in one avenue or do the classes teach you just a generalization of all avenues? Uh, we teach generalization, right? We don't, we didn't want to focus on that. Uh, so um, another great question. So our starting our, with our cybersecurity because of the accreditation and everything else, we just introduced the cybersecurity where we took everything. Then in the upcoming years, we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna now says, you can also get you know, specialization in mobile forensics or forensics. You can get specialization in what we call that defense, right? Um, uh, which is the blue team, uh, or I mean the red, the red team or the offense, which is the, the blue team. So we are going to introduce specializations, but we just don't have them right now as we are um, you know, getting more and more students enrollment and we'll start introducing more and more specializations where students can focus on that one aspect of within the cybersecurity field if they choose to do so. Wonderful. Next question. Um, what types of entry level positions are common for a cybersecurity professional? Uh, uh, that's an excellent question. So, um, you know, my students, my current students ask me this all the time. Hey, I don't have any experience. What, what am I going to do? So I'm going to tell, I usually tell them this. You start off, basically, you can't say, you know, I'm going to do start in hacking systems on the offensive side or on the defensive side. I'm going to start protecting. Um, you're going to start basically looking at these sort of these signals that are coming in and you're going to make analysis of those signals. So you start with just learning some of the basics of all of the different systems that an organization might have and getting familiar with those tools. And then as you get familiar, more experience with those tools, you start moving up into the higher and higher, you know, that offense, defense, uh, then analysis portion of it. Um, so the, the initially it's just, you're going to get, you know, basically what I called uh, indoctrinated into the system, into all the different systems by starting and learning about all of those um, systems that organizations would have in, in, in starting your career that way. Wonderful. Do you recommend completing a master's degree after the cybersecurity bachelor's program? Is this something that is like industry standard, um, the master's degree or master's certificate? Um, the master's 
degree in cybersecurity. Um, if you want to go into management, I would you know recommend that you start after you get your bachelor's so if you have experience. That's mainly more towards management, right? You want to get into the CIO, you want to become a director, you want to become the CISO, uh, the chief information security officer, that type. That's what the master's program is. Master's program, basically, you know, it's not a hands-on program. Um, we don't have a master's in cybersecurity, but most of the cybers um, yet, I should say, we're working on that. But most of the cybersecurity uh, programs they have is, you know, how do organizations take all of that information and come up with uh, sort of these policies to protect the organization, right? So you're now talking about taking a look at policies, uh, defining procedures, operational procedures, that type of stuff is for graduate degrees for that. If you wanna stay technical, then you know, a bachelor's degree along with industry certification is probably the way to go. Wonderful. And last question, what are some examples of the practical experience that is incorporated into the degree program? Um, great question. So in one of our, in our mobile forensics or in our forensics class, um, we give them a, a, what we call a, um, a trace file, right? And it says, okay, now go tell us, we've taught you the skills, you, you know, you've gone through the, the content, tell us in that trace file, what is it that you see, right? What, how did the person get in? What IP address, for example, what port was open? How did that person, once they got into the network, what did they do, right? So just one big example of that. Um, in other ones, you know, we say, okay, run a vulnerability scanner against the systems um, to see, find the vulnerabilities and that a hacker could use. So now those vulnerabilities, it's got a, you know, that those vulnerabilities has to be closed. So we teach things like that where these are practical knowledge. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Manesh, for the information you shared with us today. This was really wonderful. Uh, we will be sending a follow-up email with all of the details plus a recording. Um, but if you are eager to learn more before you receive that email, there is a bunch of contact information that you see on the slide on your screen. So feel free to reach out. Um, also, as I mentioned, you know, that um, application waiver code is cyber, all capital letters. And if you are looking specifically um, for um, more information on the cybersecurity programs, um, feel free to use that URL that you see on your screen, um, but just make sure that your cyber is all lowercase. Um, just one little typo to point out. Um, but with that, thank you so much um, for joining us. And this concludes our webinar um, for this afternoon. Thank you for all of um, our viewers for joining us. And we hope that you found the conversation, conversation informative and um, useful. So on behalf of Colorado State University Global, thank you so much and have a great rest of the day. Thank you, everyone.